Right, um, while I've been away, I've actually been quite busy. I've been making some bits and pieces for the um, Easy 3D K9 here. You can see these yellow parts were printed on this printer itself. And I've made these parts to steady up the printer, to fix it down to the base so that it can't move around as much as it was before. I'm going to make the STL files available for you to print out straight away. And I'm also going to make the... Uh, Design Spark Mechanical files which I originally designed available so you're very welcome to um, go and um, uh, adjust them if you want, make adjustments to them um, and um, whatever you want to do with them you're welcome to do that. So I'll just go through the, what I've done briefly so that you can um, see basically. So um, these ones are uh, self-evident to hold down the base of the uh, printer I've done two of those and one is all that's required it fits the front and the back and it just as you can see it just goes over and um, holds the base down with one screw yeah so so I've got those I'll just show you the one at the back so you can see how it fits yeah you can see that um, the rear ones there we obviously we had to avoid the home button but you can still get access to the home button, it's no problem, it's just over to one side and it does stop that um, from moving on the bed completely, so that movement's all gone now. I, I really had intended to um, just to fix the base to stop it moving just for the sake of convenience but I then thought it might be a good idea also to steady the printer using it and it's turned out to be so because the print quality has gone up in leaps and bounds since I first started doing this and the printers are a lot stiffer now so that's the rear one and as I say they're both the same um, the STLs will be available and also my original design fi files from Design Spark Mechanical I'm going to one back to the front again right now this bracket which you can see here is the bracket for the Y axis and that does stop lateral movement on the y-axis so that's been a very effective um, bracket as well it just simply fits over the end and then a couple of screws to screw it down to the base and as you can see there as we discussed before I've been very impressed with this filament because I actually printed this flat on the bed of the printer and um, it's so those screws are actually in in between the layer lines so it's actually screwed down very firmly so it's um, those la there's no se layer separation there at all. Now we'll go to the vertical. Um, you can see that I've made this vertical um, piece here, which is for the uh, x-axis. And what happens is the x-axis, the gantry actually slides up and down inside the um, uh, a track or a channel rather. And I haven't got it so that it rests against the back of the. Um, it just basically rides up and down in type inside those two verticals and um, again it stopped lateral movement in this case it's back and forward movement which was quite pronounced on the end of the axis it was moving around quite a bit again that's tidied up the layer lines and made the layers much look much more consistent at the end I'll just quickly show you a print that I did we'll look at the um, layer lines and you can see just how much it's improved over the original. I did actually borrow this idea from a, another YouTuber who, um, I, whose video I watched recently who produced a similar arrangement for the, um, the other printer. I believe it's the um, K7 uh, printer which is quite a different um, design to this one but it does employ a similar cantilever type X axis with only one um, vertical and it is and it is a kind of a plasticky based one so it's going to be a little bit variable and um, the other gentleman over on YouTube um, did um, design a similar kind of arrangement so I basically borrowed his design for this but obviously it's a, a separate printer and I had to design the actual item myself the idea I sort of borrowed from him and uh, obviously I'll credit his video underneath so if you if you feel interested to look you can and again that design will be available on um, Thingiverse 
on my page over there and um, again I'll give you the um, original file from um, uh, Design Spark Mechanical and also the um, STL file if anyone wants to print it out in its existing form. Already I have actually changed the base of the um, uh, print here, the base of the item, which I was intended to put two screws in slantways, but I realised that doesn't really work. So I've actually flattened out the base and it, it does, even with the bed in position, it does allow you to see that area in order to put a screw in there. So there'll be four screws. I've actually, um, when I was actually fitting this, um, it does require a bit of finesse to fit it, of course, because you've got to make sure that the printer's still um, perpendicular and so on, and it's still printing um, at right angles. So that's that does require quite a lot of finesse to get that right. But of course, um, you can do that. And in my case, because I got the screws in the wrong place uh, a couple of times, I had to um, drill a couple of extra holes in the base. But I did actually print this on a different printer, obviously, because it's, um, if memory serves me correctly, about um, 23 centimetres high. So it's too, really too big for the um, K9 printer. However, I have produced a version which is divided up into four parts um, so that it can be printed on this printer. But I had went ahead and printed it on the CR10 because I just wanted to... Uh, verify that the design worked before I went to the trouble of actually splitting it up and doing a lot of extra work on it. But as you can see, it does work. I have maybe possibly went over the top on the clearance because it's quite a bit of clearance there. But again, if you want to adjust the um, part or the item, you can do um, by using the um, uh, Design Spark Mechanical software and, and taking the file from um, uh, Thingiverse. And please feel free to do that. And I'd like to see if you, um, you know, do do adjustments to the uh, design and so on, and so forth. I'd like to see posting on Thingiverse if you can. Yeah, if you have a Thingiverse page of your own, you can link to that, and uh, of course, and then you can post your make, and then, um, you know, maybe post your your file to Thingiverse, and then every everyone else will be able to benefit from it as well if you're uh, okay to do that. So that's the vertical piece looked at. Um, I don't think there's anything to say about that really, apart from what I've already said. And just to let you know that I actually printed this in PETG, so it's a little bit different. But the reason why I made it so massive, the reason I did that is because I thought I was going to be printing it in PLA. So certainly for PETG, it's probably a little bit over the top, but for PLA, I'm not sure, because you've got that extended vertical piece which has to be strong. Maybe that could have been a, a, a tad thicker, but I think it, looking at it, it looks about 10 millimeters. So, you know, I'd be quite happy to, to go with that for PLA. Now I'll move on to the final piece that I've actually made in this um, tranche of um, uh, models. And um, that's the bracket for the Z axis. And I'll just show you that. So it does stop twisting. And um, obviously the side to side uh, movements as well. Yeah, and that's very firm and very strong. You do have to put some finesse when you're actually mounting these um, uh, brackets and uh, clips because they need to be, the printer needs to be still printing um, at right angles and you need to be certain when you do this that um, it's still printing at right angles. So what I would suggest before you make any adjustments, before you fix these things down, you need to check the printer with uh, a, a right angle square, a carpenter square or some kind of square to make sure it's still in square. You can place it on the printing bed to check the um, x-axis and place it on the uh, bottom of the platform, whatever it is you're using to hold the printer and you can measure between the uh, y-axis and the base before you go fixing things down completely because you'll be aware that if it's not square when you go to print none of your prints will be square so that's a very important thing to bear in mind now I'll just go on to show you um, the quality I've achieved on my latest print and I'll also talk to you about another issue which came up when I was actually printing there was a problem with distortion on the print because of the bed surface material not being a heated bed. As you can see here, I've actually gone back to using 
the original printing surface. This is to achieve greater adhesion because although the Ender 3 print bed surface that material that I was using before does give you a better lower surface on the print if you're printing directly on the bed but the adhesion is less and that I'll go on to talk to you about that why that's a problem um, in the next section as you can see there on this piece which is the Z axis bracket where I printed it on this printer and this was a seven hour print bear in mind there's actually quite some distortion on the actual base of the print you can see there that it's curved up quite a bit and um, I think this, this is due basically to poor bed adhesion on the printing surface from the end of three and while you do get a better surface on the bottom of the print the, the, the sides do lift up and um, I don't think there's any way you can counter that with this printer apart from to use the original surface because um, the bed adhesion with the original surface is so good I think this will probably counter this distortion but I will do another test print to uh, to look into that but I just wanted to show you how good the uh, new um, layers are and the consistency with the layers is far better you can see it's not perfect but it's much better than it was the layers are much more consistent the uprights are much more upright than they were and I'll just show you the other sides there you can see the y-axis and again as I'm sort of looking around it you can even see a kind of a sheen over the um, layers there and um, this is actually the um, y-axis you can see here um, the back and front and again it's much more consistent and and much better and the the uprights upright completely upright this is the y-axis again it's much more consistent this is the x-axis and you can see how beautifully consistent it is and again it's still not perfect but for a printer that costs fifty pounds or fifty dollars um, I don't think it's possible to get the kind of consistency that you'll get with um, something like the Ender 3 which is in my book the ab absolute perfection in terms of printers it I have one and it produces absolutely superb prints it's it's the gold standard really for 3d printing and this one is not going to achieve that but if you do want absolute perfection on your prints you're going to have to go for one of the new lots of printers there are recently or, or an Ender 3 itself of course now we'll just go on to look at the top surface you can see how beautiful they are absolutely this this these top surfaces are absolutely perfect I think that's probably the pièce de résistance for this printer is top surfaces it's just incredible I don't think I've ever known a printer prints top surfaces so good as this one does it's just incredible obviously it's a good bit down to the the slicer we're using here is Cura of course Cura 5.4.0 I haven't yet progressed to the latest version of Cura but this is Cura 5.4.0 and it's doing a brilliant job in combination with the Easy 3 DK9 to produce superb top surfaces all the top surfaces are incredible in my opinion really absolutely beautiful consistent and smooth and um, just absolutely beautiful it does do that well please feel free to visit over on um, Thingiverse my Thingiverse page and uh, you can download all these models of course if you want to um, get uh, Design Spark Mechanical you can also edit the files as well and uh, make adjustments to suit your own needs um, improvements and so on and uh, please post make if you do make it and um, I look forward to seeing them all and of course any comments you know please feel free to make them in the comments below and I'll try to answer everyone Thanks for watching, and if you did find the video useful, find any of the files useful and so on, please consider liking the video and also subscribing to my channel to get more updates on new videos I'm bringing out. See you next time. Bye.